Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this video from Botanicum by Maria Trolle. Today we're using um, Prismacolor pencils, well again, like we did um, last time. We're going to start by working on all the leaves. So I'm going to come in quite a bit closer, oh no, too far, so we can see all the leaves. There we go. So we're going to pick some greens. Now I always feel personally that bluey greens go nicer with pinky purple flowers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a similar thing to what we did with our flowers. So start with a sort of base colour and sort of build up. So I'm just grabbing a colour. I'm going to start with the true green. Okay. And just colour in every leaf and stem. And then we'll add some layers of colour afterwards so it's just a gentle colouring <laughs> trying to work out quite what's what she's got a little bee on her lap I just noticed that there we go there and we'll just uh, do the same with all of them. The others should be easier than that one. So I hope everyone's feeling well today and having a good day. Um, I am good. Just had a very nice lunch. Um, so I did too. I was really fancying some crisps and there's this sort of lovely olive oil crisps that I like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, they sell one type in my local supermarket that I rather like, so I was going to grab some, but unfortunately they sold out. They only had a paprika flavour, which um, I only eat um, salted, you know, um, ready salted plain crisps. And uh, so, I'm just checking, you can see. Um, so I couldn't have those, so uh, my son picked up some vegetable crisps, you know, um, beetroot and sweet potato and parsnip and we had some of those between the three of us and husbands at work today and uh, they were quite nice I said to him that's three of our five a day then <laughs> he's like no and I said well you had guacamole and dipped jaws in so that's you had four of your five a day he's like no he says that doesn't even count as one I'm not sure I believe him I just think guacamole is quite good for one I'm not sure what this line is here I think I'm going to colour it like that because um, the same as here, look, I've got a line, or else it's, um, it's a bit strange. I'm thinking a little bit as I'm colouring here, looking at these little gaps, you know, sort of background we've got and what colour to do them. I'm not really sure yet. It's early days to think about background. I mean, we've got our moon and stars. So obviously we've got a um, sort of sky to do, um, night sky. Um, not sure whether I'll do that in pencil or pastel. Um, pastel will be quicker, but it might smudge the uh, prismas a little bit if I'm not careful. So I have to give it some thought. And maybe the bit behind these plants might be different to the sky. We might not be looking through here to sky, we might be looking through here to darker leaves maybe. I'll have a think about that because when I'm do when I've done the leaves, it depends how dark they go. And if they're not massively dark, I could put a little bit of darker green in behind them. Just to look like we've we're sort of looking through to more bush, if you know what I mean. I have a think. But um, obviously we do need some sky up the top. And, uh, have a think about that as well. Lots to think about. Lots of planning. And these um, bees, they've got dotted wings, almost as if they're colourful wings. Obviously bees normally don't have a lot of colour in their wings. So it's something else to think about. Is it a bee? I think it is. Could it be a moth? I don't think so. You know, it's a possibility. I could just do it however I like. I don't have to think about, you know, I don't have to do it as a 
traditional animal sort of thing. So sometimes I get really into Maria's books and sometimes I don't do them for a while. I've been very much into Johanna Basford um, for the sort of lot in May and uh, I was sort of thinking I'd really like to finish another of her books and uh, I was trying to calculate, I counted how many pages I'd done in Ivy and calculated that if I wanted to finish Ivy before her new book comes out in October I'd have to do three or four pages a week. That's a lot. I've got a lot of pages left. Um, Ivy is a big book though but quite a few of the pictures are quite teeny tiny. Um, some of the pages just have a little swirl or you know a little flourish or a little bit of um, Ivy or you know things like that so there isn't they're not always a full picture but I you know there are some double pages but what I'm doing with Ivy at the moment is mainly colouring pages that I've done for you already in um, videos so you know every every Monday I do the Johanna Basford planner and there's a lot of Ivy and the Inky Butterfly pictures in there so um, I was thinking next week's is but it's not anyway I'll be I'll be a bit out with my weeks because of don't always record in order. I'm now grabbing the um, grass green. It's just quite dark, isn't it? I don't think I want that. I think I want to go for this. This is the parrot green. I think it's much prettier. We use this. And remember with um, our florals, we started doing a little bit of darker colour at the bottom. That's what I want to do with the leaves. Um, So, just sort of popping in some darker. Not sure what I'm going to do with the um, veins and things. I might just ignore them because I didn't do anything with the lines and bits in the flowers. So it might be a bit odd if I suddenly started doing something with the leaves. But I'll just, I just ignore them at the minute and make a decision a bit later. Um. Yes, anyway, so I'm going through Ivy doing all the pictures that I've done for you already in planners and things. So that's keeping me busy. I've got plenty of pages to do. Um, there's a whole double page that I haven't even thought about yet. With um, The one with the near the beginning with the hydrangea on the right hand side, that's a lovely page. Um, but, you know, daunting at the same time. And um, but I've just done um, the Chris Cheng tutorial for the little mouse. Um, the opposite page has been a planner page. I'm not sure if the little mouse has been. I was in two minds as to whether to do it as a video. But in the end I decided that I just have really, really wanted to do that Chris Cheng tutorial for such a long time. I just thought I'm just gonna go for it and it didn't really take me very long um, it's a one and a half hour video it probably took me three or four hours I did miss a few bits out you know where she was going fast and I said oh I can't keep up type thing you probably do that with me um, and um, it doesn't look really similar to hers in that if you put them side by side, although you would recognise it was the same picture because the colours are the same, there's a lot of little details that are very different. But you know what, overall I was pleased and who's going to be doing a side by side comparison anyway? Not me. So, uh, and it was really lovely. The um, I really like the sort of orange and olivey combined colours she has going with her sort of almost like a sunsetty feel to it all. I really like that. So nothing like the colours I'm doing for this one. Um, even though obviously it was Prisma colour. She always uses Prismas. I don't know whether I should have done that bit, but never mind. It's done that. Yeah, she always uses Prismas. Um, I can see why. She uses them brilliantly. But... Um, they're not always my pencil or first choice, although obviously they are today. 
now I'm thinking I want a bit of really darker colour in some areas. It's very going to be very similar sort of technique to what I did with the um, petals and I think it'll work well using the same technique. I've got the peacock green. What was that then? Oh, that was the parrot green. This is the peacock green. Yes, this will work. So I'm going to do this sort of on the tips and also to put in some shadow, shadowy areas where there's overlap. Sort of thinking on the edges of the stem, maybe. So along the edges here where, as I say, where there's overlap and then a little bit down here as well. Now we are going to go over with another colour like we did with the petals. Well, I'm just going to keep layering up until I'm happy with how it looks really. There's no um, sort of method to it. It's just until it looks right. It always looks like that to me when um, I'm doing a Chris Chang that she just keeps adding layers until she's happy. But I suspect it's far more rehearsed than that. I bet she's done a couple of versions of it already. This is so good. You wouldn't just wing it, would you? If you wouldn't be that good. I don't know. I'm sure I'm the only person that sits here and doesn't plan and just messes around and hopes it works. But I guess you get to know whether you can do that or not. I mean, I know that I can usually put it off or draw it back if, it, if it's not quite going right. I do have a few videos where I'm not happy with the result, but you know, it's what I always find quite fascinating actually is that I have, you know, some pictures that I do I like better than others, and you'll be the same. It happens to us all. And yet, yeah, I will put them up on um, my social media channels, and people will seem to like more so the ones that I dislike. Or the ones that took less effort or thought or, you know, people like those more than the ones that took ages and that I absolutely adore. It's really funny. It just shows that we've all got such different tastes and that's why being self-critical is, you know, bad. Because not only does it take the joy out of what we're doing, but you just don't know whether other people might for it. you know imagine if you were a um, professional artist as a job and you were say doing portraits and you hated color portraits you were only light black and white some people do however all your customers always wanted color ones that's all they liked you would have to adapt your style to make to do what people wanted i know some artists don't like doing this but you know if you're a uh, if you're not a sort of best-selling artist you have to adapt what you do to fit the requirements of your client and so you know it just sort of shows that you don't always have to you know it's not always what you think is best that other people think I haven't done the um, parrot green on these you may have noticed so I'm just going to do that quickly first before I uh, on and do the um, there. So yeah, that's the parrot green. I can't remember what it's called. Peacock green. Sorry, Derp. <laughs> That's why I didn't say it. I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> there we go. Remember to keep going with those little shadow lines. It does make a difference. I haven't done it on those either. This one I do it quite near the bottom. I haven't got many words. What should I say? Quiet today. I've um. It's like afternoon, so I did the first half of this this morning, and had lunch. 
was quite quiet at the lunch table. My boys had their phones out. Excuse me. Um, you know, they're 18 now. I can't, like, ban phones. Well, I used to always ban phones at the table. I tend to at the weekend, you know, so, you know, we're all together. Let's actually talk, you know. But um, I was doing the crossword that was in the paper on my by my where I was sitting, so I wasn't any better than them. I just wanted a bit of quiet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do the crossword. We buy a big issue um, magazine, which is. Um, sold by homeless people to sort of help them get sorted which I think is good you know my husband believes in um, you know helping people to help themselves type thing which I think is very much what that is all about you know rather than begging which they're not allowed to do they're selling something learning a, a sort of career at the same time as making some much needed money. Okay, now I'm going to do a layer all over to sort of blend it all together like we did with our pink. I'm just choosing. I think I'm going to use this colour. This is, what's this called? Light green. It's of the same sort of ilk, uh, bluey green, light bluey green type colour. And I'm just going to go over each one and just blend it all up, mix the colours together and hopefully, you know, get rid of some of the white paper, make it a little more vibrant and um, if it needs a bit more after, a bit more colour, uh, I'll add a bit more. But until it's sort of all done and sitting back and looking at it, you don't really know. gone all cloudy now I've opened the blind there was some sun earlier but it's forecast for rain this afternoon so not sure whether and it's a sort of 40% chance of rain I think it said so we'll see I don't know whether that happens everywhere in across the world but rather than just saying it's going to rain they now give you the percentage likelihood um, I'm just going to grab my peacock green again and we've got this stem going up through here I'm just going to darken the edges a little bit and then fade it inwards. I tried to do this with the other stems but they were a little bit too thin. There we go. I can't work out what that is. So I'm just going to ignore it. As you know, that's the best way. Just ignore things in life we don't know what to do with. <laughs> Anyways, um, what's the saying? Oh yes, they give you a percentage chance of rain, which is reasonably useful. But we live in a valley, have a microclimate, so it's not very easy to predict what might happen weather-wise here. It uh, doesn't behave like it should. Basically, we're surrounded by hills, and um, so sometimes the cloud just can't get over the hill so it stays drier than predicted. Other times the cloud gets stuck in the valley and can't get out. <laughs> and then just rains and rains and rains. So it's all quite, it makes it interesting. It means we talk about the weather even more here than we do normally in the UK. I don't know, is that really a British thing? We sort of reckon it is, talking about the weather is very British because I think there's two reasons for it. Firstly, our weather is forever changing, and so therefore, it's, you know, if the weather was the same every day, what would there be to talk about? Oh, the weather's boring, or something like that, I don't know. But because it changed, but also apparently because of the way British people used to have, you know, a stiff upper lip, you've got to behave in an appropriate way, the right etiquette, blah, blah, blah. Um, talking about the weather is quite a good thing to talk about because it's not controversial. You know, we're not talking politics, we're not talking 
um, religion. We're not talking anything, you know, where it's sort of controversial opinions or anything. We're just talking about the weather. It's something that nobody can influence and um, everyone experiences in a similar way. And therefore, it's uh, quite a good thing to talk about, you know. And it's also good for if you don't know someone very well, because if you don't know what they're into and what they're not into, you know, it's uh, it doesn't matter. You can just start saying, oh, how about this weather we're having? You know, that sort of thing. Right, I have been thinking a little bit while I've been chattering on about this background bit behind. What I think I'm going to do is to, in every area that is within leaves, petals, so I mean areas like this and this, but not areas like anything outside here, I'm going to do with a green. And I'm trying to have a look and decide, I think what I'm going to use, I might use the grass green because the grass green is still a slightly bluish green, but it's a different tone, so I'm just sharpening, sorry. So it won't um, detract from the leaves, we'll still see the shape of the leaves, but it will fill in some gaps. So, and it's quite dark, so I'm going to sort of pop some in these gaps. And you know, some layering it up quite a bit, I want it to be fairly um, solid. It's a little bit light for my liking, but I'll um, I'll go over it with something um, on the edges so that we can see some shadows of our um, petals and leaves, and then it will they'll still stand out quite well, I think. But the um, first job is to just get it filled in. I'm gonna do that bit. We're gonna sort of observe these lines, so I can do this one here. As I said, anything that's sort of above the on above the top edges, like here, I'm not going to do anything up here. Okay. So I'm just working my way through, just filling in, so nothing too difficult. Um, yeah, I want this to be quite dark, but I think this makes a really pretty base colour actually. As I say, we're going to go over it in other colours to, to make it look dark. So what's your favourite Prisma colour pencil? What, what colour is your favourite? I'm thinking... I like the olive greens, the lime green, the chartreuse even, moss green, those greens. But I also like the violet. Um, I quite like the deco pink and I don't even want to say that loudly because I'm not a pinky person at all but it's a rather refreshing change to have such a pale pink compared with what we tend to get in a lot of sets where we get these really brash pinks that I just am not keen on. Hmm, got another bit here that I don't know what it is. I'm just going to colour over it. Um, yeah, so that's me. Um, I think most of the colours are quite typical, traditional, you know, so they don't sort of stand out from other sets. Um, but there's a few that are quite, that are a bit different. Um, there's the ginger root is really very different to any other colour in any other set I've ever had, apart from Artex, which were a copy of Prismas, and they've got a similar one in there, but that isn't surprising. And I'm not a big fan of that colour, to be honest. It's a very odd colour. Um, the I quite like the greys. Um, what else? Yeah, the yellow, oranges, reds, they're fine. They're not anything special but they're fine but we have an interesting sort of range with the sort of henna um chestnut those ones they're an interesting set of pencils sort of very browny reds like siennas um 
See, I've got a gap here. And I feel that I just forgot to colour up to the edge of the petal. And I'm just going to grab my pink. And I'm going to just fill that in there. I don't know why I didn't do that bit. I think I was a bit confused by what was going on or something. I don't know. But I do think that the prisms have a nice range of colour. That's for sure. Having only ever had this big set, I can't say whether I would um, feel a smaller set was adequate, if you know what I mean. It's a little bit difficult to know for sure. I think that's the back of the leaf. Didn't colour it in. Hang on, we'll have a look at it in a minute. There we go. So the back of the leaf, we'll just grab our um, true green and I'll do it a little bit. That might actually be enough. Okay. So now I want to darken up those spaces. So I'm going to use the dark green, which I've got to sharpen, so bear with me a moment. There we go. Here we go, dark green. And what I particularly want to do is to fill in the edges here. And then just sort of gently mix it into the um, grass grain, that's it. <laughs> can't even remember what I'm doing. There we go. I've got to try and identify every little space and do this. I'll get there. But I'll probably miss some out, you know me. Just, um, Take the colour in until it feels like you've got the blend right. In the smaller spaces you may cover all of the green that's there already. In the larger spaces you probably won't. Oh, the sun's out. It's not coming down onto the desk, fortunately. I don't think anyway. And this takes a little bit of patience, I think it's worth it. So my husband's supposed to be organising his holiday today at work. He always takes a lot longer than he says though. Um, because he, I said to him, take a few weeks off during the summer. But it doesn't really matter what weeks. We haven't got any plans. So uh, yesterday he was working closely with his boss who was going to do it. And, but he was so busy he didn't even have time for a coffee. Today he woke up with a really bad headache. I see he hadn't drunk enough. This bit looks a bit like it needs... I'm going to use the grass green to just fill it in a bit because it looks a bit too pale for my liking. There's too much paper showing through. There we go. That's better. I hope you can see, I don't know if you can see that well from that the it's making these look more three dimensional as I fill in this back part. I think that bit should be green there. And here. And it sort of sits back a little bit and uh helps our plants to look like they're on the top sort of thing and that this green bit is behind now that's a stem isn't it yeah so he's going to have a bit of time off so I'm going to try and um, find some time when I'm not working so we can 
go out a few places, do a few things. I think I'm going to fill that right in, which should be nice. Um, hopefully it won't be too hot. I should have boy's birthday. I wonder what day of the week that is on. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Her birthday is in August. Ah, uh, her birthday. Oh, it's on a Tuesday. But her husband's birthday is on a Sunday. So he won't need to take his birthday off, but he might want, he'd want to take their birthday off if he can. This bit, I think I'm going to use the other green in the middle. There we go. Yeah, it's... Uh, I thought it was all cloudy when I came in here. It's a really thick cloud and it's sunny. I'm hoping we might be able to see the Aurora Borealis, the um, Northern Lights again soon. Um, apparently there's going to be another opportunity. I'm grabbing that grass green again just to darken that a bit out. Um, apparently it's going to be another opportunity to see it soon in the UK. Did anyone see it? I missed it, I was so annoyed. Well, I mean, not that annoyed. I don't get that annoyed about things like that. But the first night it occurred, um, no, we weren't aware. No one said. You know, it wasn't on the news or anything. And then the next day it was on the news going, oh, don't worry if you missed it, you can see it tomorrow. And like, yay. We stayed up really late. That's right, it was the Eurovision Song Contest day. Stayed up really late, kept looking at it. It was as cloudy as anything, we couldn't see a thing. So, uh, nobody did either. It was cloudy across the whole country. <laughs> I'm disappointing. But husband says he's always wanted to do it. It's sort of one of his, although he hasn't got a formal one, it's like one of his bucket list items. And um, so he'd love to be able to do it in this country, save him having to go anywhere else to see it, you know. Like sort of some people go to Scandinavia to see it, Iceland or whatever, Norway. Um, but it's, I think Scotland is probably a better option, really. But it's still a long way to go, really, for us. We're, I mean, we're not like you Americans. Like, you Americans wouldn't bat an eyelid for driving for four days to get somewhere. We don't do that in the UK. <laughs> we, yeah, driving for a, a few hours is enough for us. <sighs> yeah, you know, we don't go, yay, road trip. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not everyone. Maybe it's just in the movies. I don't know. But uh, I did a long road trip when I was in America. We did. Um, well, we did um, from San Diego to um, Vegas, basically. I find it quite interesting. There's a lot to see, whereas in the UK, when you're doing, when you're in a car, there's not lots to see. I mean, I saw things like, um, um, men on horses, um, um, with sort of um, herding cattle, you know, and uh, sort of um, indigenous tribes people. And things I don't get that in the flipping UK. You get like uh, roads with cars <laughs> and roads, and more roads, and more roads, and just concrete <laughs> roads. And they've got steep embankments so you can't see anything um, because it keeps the traffic noise down because the roads are so busy. It's like, hmm, it's not really exciting. In fact, a lot of drivers tend to sort of start to fall asleep because it's, there's just nothing to look at apart from the back of the car in front. Yeah. But anyway, we probably wouldn't drive if we're going up to Scotland. I'd probably get a train. There's a train to Edinburgh. It takes. Um, I'm not sure actually. I used to get a train to Glasgow. I remember having an interview 
in Glasgow for my uni course and we went there and back in a day. Got up really early, the train was very early. I'm just checking for bits I've missed. I think that's all of it. I'm rather pleased with how that's come out actually, even if I do say so myself. I've been going for about 35 minutes, about the same amount of time as the last video. So what I think I might do is split this into a three-parter. Let's um, do that. And then, because there isn't loads to go, because we've got the bugs, the girl, and then the sky. So I think that would make a nice sort of final video. We can take it slowly. We've got lots of detailing to do on our bugs and things. I might just erase that little bit there where it's gone over the wing before um, the next video. But um, we'll um, we'll do those and think about the sky. I've got an idea for the sky. Hmm. I shall think about it. It's going to be quite tricky because I've got this line around the edge, and I don't want to go outside of it with my sky. So if I do it in a pastel, hmm. I'm going to ponder to myself in between videos and go and get a coffee, and then I'll um, be back with the to record the next bit, which you will find tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really lovely day. Please do subscribe. Um, I seem to be I'm not getting as many subscribers as I have done lately. I'm not sure why. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. And you can click the bell and decide how many notifications you get. And you can set that to none so you don't get bothered at all. But um, I do really appreciate it. So if you could, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. Have a really super day. And happy colouring.